Well, if we're going to speak more specifically about the EU and Turkey, um, that depends on which way the relationship will go. You know, um, there are two sort of large paths available, right? One is the accession process, um, you know, because Turkey is um, formally an accession country um, with the, you know, ideally with the goal of eventual membership. Um, so that's one way, you know, taking when, if both sides would take the accession process seriously um, and engage in, you know, um, and negotiations towards that end, that's one scenario. The other is partnership, let's um, um, put it more, sort of to say more broadly, to engage in a partnership that is not uh, restricted to accession, that's, that just goes sort of beyond, which is in a way an alternative to accession. Um, what we're going through, like these days, it seems like the emphasis lately, actually, the past um, one could say five, six years, the accession negotiate, the accession process has halted due to various reasons, due to the um, end of the reform and democratization process in Turkey, the lack of political will internally uh, on the part of the Turkish government, um, but also on the other side, um, due to um, internal opposition within the EU to. Um, Turkey's uh, membership um, coming from particularly Cyprus or from other EU members due to the Cyprus conflict. So the Cyprus conflict has really sort of blocked the accession negotiations. No new chapters are being opened. There are vetoes um, brought by France, by Cyprus, by EU in general on um, the opening of chapters. So due to these sort of internal, external reasons, the accession process has basically halted. And there is no will um, on both sides basically, to really take this seriously and work on um, the progress for accession. The EU is in crisis, has been, you know, um, in an almost an ex existential crisis really the past couple of years. It started with the Euro and then the migration and etc. There's a possibility of Brexit. Um, so the EU's own future is very much um, a question mark and becoming seriously, you know, some of the pillars, the EU, Euro and the migration, migration, they are, these are the, you know, fundamental pil pillars of the EU are being challenged. Um, therefore, the EU leaders do not have the energy, the resources, the willingness to engage with Turkey anymore in the, in, in the context of accession, right? And on the other hand, you have a government um, in Turkey which is more and more moving away from democracy and reforms, which is um, very um, you know, authoritarian and repressive, and which, frankly, um, I mean, the current situation, I think, suits the interests of the Turkish government, because if the EU were to pressure for, um, would, were to take the accession process seriously, that would imply democratization, political reforms, human rights reforms in Turkey, which the current government doesn't want, right? That's very clear. This is a game, it's a theater um, that both parties are playing. We're both sort of, they're both sort of keeping up the appearance that there is this accession process, which actually in reality has ended. Um, which is of course, it's a pity, very much a pity, um, especially for democracy and human rights in Turkey, but in general, I think for the Europe as well. So then, th therefore, um, but not just because of this, but also due to some external, developments um, in the region, you know, the um, civil wars going on in the Middle East, um, um, the migration, um, um, the refugee crisis that's been produced uh, by these uh, civil wars, tensions with Russia, etc. So due to these external problems, there's been a um, willingness on the part of um, the EU to seek a different kind of, or to emphasize a different kind of relationship, to develop a different kind of relationship with Turkey, which anyway has always been on the agenda, but I think there's now more interest to emphasize that, and that's what's called partnership. And this is not confined, this is no longer in terms, of, we're not talking about accession anymore, but we're talking about the EU and Turkey to be partners. This is foreign policy cooperation. Um, here we're talking about realpolitik, not norms. Uh, we're not talking about democracy and human rights anymore, but sort of strategic partnership um, on issues such as security, for example. Um, Turkey is a NATO member. It has a very important geostrategic value for, for the EU and for the West in general, for the US as well. 
Um, and this kind of relationship suits the Turkish government better too, because it doesn't entail a European external pressure for democracy and human rights. You know, we're talking about um, the Turkish government wants to be taken seriously as a partner. Um, you know, it, it wants to be invited to summits and be consulted on, and um, but doesn't you know, want to uh, commit to European values. So these are two different diverging paths. Um, it is unfortunate that we uh, see um, more and more sort of move away from accession and going towards these sort of this partnership model, which also caters to um, the European, internal European, um, uh, the European public opinion, right? Especially in Germany, for example, in France. Um, um, th there's, of course, resistance to uh, further enlargement um, but, you know, partnering with Turkey, you know, to discuss, to negotiate, for example, the Syrian refugees, that's fine, right? Um, so this also allows um, Turkey to be um, an, you know, an autocratic but stable, politically stable, autocratic authoritarian regime. Uh, as long as it's stable, you know, the, unfortunately the EU doesn't care that much anymore for Turkey to be democratic because everyone is busy with their own internal crisis and etc. So it seems like we're going towards that, that path and um, so the future of the relationship, as I said, depends, right? If we're going to go this path, down this path of um, cooperation, there's no reason to expect um, crisis unless, of course, um, uh, Turkey diverges from common security policies and um, sort of follows its own lead um, and acts independently from um, Europe and the West in its relations with Russia and etc. Which of course may also happen and has been happening. But absent that, there's no problem, right? But if we go, if, if somehow magically, you know, the Cyprus um, um, uh, crisis is resolved and um, Cyprus removes its veto on the opening of new chapters, so does France and other EU member states, um, the current government in Turkey changes its policies, which of course is a big question mark, but maybe perhaps we'll have a new government in the future, which is you know, pro-democracy, human rights minded. Things can change, but that's a big question mark, um, also because of the crisis that EU is in. You know, I always shy away from uh, a projection, because um, I always find it uh, sort of inherently speculative, but okay, let's um, think about it. As I said, I mean, it really depends on, there's a big, big variable there. It depends on which way this relationship will go. Um, but, you know, we can think of certain topics, of course. Um, um, depends on, well, let's say the Kurdish question. I think that that is a, that is a potential that has always been, of course, a source of tension, but can become even more. So far, the EU um, itself and EU member states um, first and foremost Germany, um, but also the US. They haven't really challenged um, the Turkish um, regime, the Turkish state in its Kurdish policies, right? Um, um, there, are, there are very strong historical ties between uh, Turkey and Europe, um, military cooperation, political um, cooperation, etc. And the West has always shied away from really challenging the essence of Kurdish Turkey's Kurdish policies. Of course, you know, they've been critical of human rights violations, etc. Um, but the essence of it, they've really shied away from, uh, from challenging that. Now, with what's going on in Syria and the emergence of the Syrian Kurds as, um, as sort of reliable partners for um, the Western alliance in their fight against IS, um, this, th th there's tension there, right? Because the Syrian Kurds have been the only um, effective and sort of committed um, um, internal forces on the ground in Syria, um, also the Iraqi Kurds in Iraq, to fight against IS. It is in the interest of the, of, of the US and Europe um, that, uh, that uh, to support the Kurds um, in Syria and in Iraq. Um, as far as the Turkish government is concerned, uh, they are, they do now have, um, since the past maybe decade, they do have good cooperation with the Iraqi Kurds, so that's not a problem, but the Syrian Kurds, the so emergence of a new sort of uh, de facto um, sort of um, self-rule areas in Syria uh, poses a threat um, for uh, the, the sort of long established policy of the Turkish state vis-a-vis -vis the Kurds. They just don't want uh, the emergence, they, they don't want, the Turkish state doesn't want to neighbor uh, Kurd, you know, Kurdish-controlled 
Syria in its border, right? They don't want the southern border to be in the control of the, the Kurdish state, uh, of the Kurds of Syria. But of, but of course, it's a big problem because the alternative is IS, right? And that's, that is, that, that, that's, a, that's a sort of um, tension. And I believe that, the, that Europe and the EU needs to really seriously reconsider and revise their stance on this issue and take leadership. So far, they've been very passive. Um, in general, in foreign policy, EU is not very active, that we know. But that's a big source of tension. Russia is, of course, another one. Um, um, the Turkish government has been acting very um, well, daringly, let's put it that way, against Russia. I mean, there's a, sort of, uh, a crisis has been es escalating. Um, so there's that. There's, of course, a refugee migration issue. Uh, unfortunately, democracy and human rights in Turkey may not be um, a source of tension. I wish it was. Um, I wish that Europe really um, acted um, you know, held, you know, acted upon its own values and norms and engaged in a more critical dialogue with Turkey. Uh, and here I mean not just the EU, but also the Council of Europe, because there are other, of course, European institutions. Um, but, you know, we're living increasingly um, in a world of realpolitik, and, um, and, um, and it is unfortunate. <laughs>